Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the movie trivia showdown. This is the fourth play in match here. I am Christian Harloff, joined as always by Mark Ellis. Mark, it is the fourth play in match. It is going to be an entertaining one, to say the least. Yeah, it's baby carrots, Christian. Anyway, when you look at the landscape of a tournament, you say, ooh, look at all these exciting matchups. I'm going to fill out my bracket. I'm going to get my Elite Eight, my Final Four. And you tend to gloss over the playing matches. That has not been the case with the movie Trivia Schmodown because we've had three matches so far that are technically play-ins, but they've been as scintillating as any Final Four in recent memory. And Christian, with this last matchup, we have two competitors, at least one of which I know really wants to continue to play. You know... Had you said that about two weeks ago, I would have said, yep, and I know exactly what you're talking about. I don't know if that's the case anymore. I don't know if that's the case anymore. I got to tell you, because I know you're throwing shots at our at our friend and, and co-host in the past, Bonnie, the smoke show, Somerville. I didn't say who. She has fought hard every time she has played, and she's gotten some 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 smack from the smack talk from the fans, from, from other competitors. I mean, hell, the manager on the other side here today, Shannon Barney, had her and traded her this, the day after she lost. But Bonnie has told me how bad she wanted to play. And Bonnie told me how bad she wanted to be in this thing. And Ken Nabsock, the manager of the Droogs, listened. He talked to her and he said, you know what? I believe that she is motivated and she wants to do this. On the other side of that is Lady Justice, Marisol McKee. We found her in Orlando, Mark. She was in the crowd. Someone approached us and said, look at this lady. She's going to be good. And we said, I've heard that before. I've had someone say that to me before, and I'm glad I listened to that person. That person was Clark Wolf, and we found Rachel Cushing. Is Lady Justice the next Rachel Cushing? I don't know. I don't know how she is, but we know she's played in the fan leagues before. She's done very well, and now she's fighting for corruption again in the tournament. Yeah, you know, we had a great time at the after party hosted by Video Drew at her hometown bar in Brooklyn, New York. And just getting to talk with Marisol, she knows so much about movies. The knowledge is just pouring out of her. And when you look at Bonnie Somerville, yeah, now look, maybe Ken Knapsack saw something in her. He saw that competitive fire that she really wants to get in this tournament and rip some stuff up. Or maybe uh, Bonnie made a tree fall on Ken's car. A lot like what happened to Bonnie when she couldn't oh, yes. make it to okay. our panel at WonderCon in two. 2014 to moderate. I still wonder if that really happened. We'll find out maybe a little bit. We do have a picture that she sent us. Was it from Google Images? We'll never know. And I do love Bonnie. She is a dear friend. She is very motivated also because she I know Bonnie and she's got that she's that I she's got that Italian temper, man. The Irish temper also. It's a mixture of both. She wants to stick it to Shannon. She's pissed at Shannon, and this could be it to take out this rookie hotshot in Lady Justice. A lot of smack talk happened over social media. A lot of things happened in general, and we're going to show you exactly how we got here right now. If there's one thing that you already know about corruption is that we bounce back. We don't quit. We don't stop. We take our losses in stride, and we move on. I remember positioning you for an epic comeback here in the new era. I hyped you up despite the mockery I faced for doing so. I even gave you one of the best monikers in the league, though in retrospect I'm starting to think that maybe Hot Mess Express would be more appropriate, but I digress. Shannon traded Bonnie Somerville to the Burning Droogs for Claudia Dolph. How? Why? I do not know. Hey guys, it's Bonnie, Smoke Show Somerville. I'm back and I'm ready to win. Bonnie Somerville, I get it. She's probably easy for all of you to overlook. I'm not, I'm not trying to hate on Bonnie. Oh boy, here you go. But my cat would beat Bonnie Somerville oh, in a oh, movie trivia show. This may be a playing match, but this is not Brett Sheridan. This is Marisol McKee. I'm overdue for my singles debut. And that has only left me hungrier. Her only mission to ensure that justice is served for the points that you cause corruption. Everyone in the Schmodown is used to that kind of talk. Keep discounting her. Bonnie will surprise you, because I know Bonnie Somerville. You know what my motivation is this time? Basically to kick Shannon's ass, because you know what? Oh, you acted like my friend, girl power, but you traded me an hour later. 
come on. She's cotton candy. She's colorful, she's fluffy, she's fun for a little bit, and she's empty calories. And I'm gonna kick y'all ass. So, I'm ready to go, can't wait, bring it on, let's go. You question why I'm here, is it just to collect money? Yes, but I have a name, I have a name to protect, and I'm here to show you that I know how to manage. I'm gonna remind Bonnie why she was unworthy of corruption in the first place. I'm not one to backtalk my competition typically, but I'm going to turn Bonnie to dust. Gloves are off, Mark. The gloves are off with Shannon. The gloves are I mean, that's Ken Nassau. You know, he's the best promo guy in the business for a reason. He believes in Bonnie. He was he was another guy who was put in this position, right? Of He didn't want to manage, and he got put in the position. Now he's managing, and he's a damn good manager. He's had champions in the past. And what if? What if he takes Bonnie to that first win? What if he knocks out corruption? What would that mean for him and his legacy as a manager? Yeah, I mean, with, with Ken, you really got to put his back against the wall to make him accomplish anything. If, if he had it his way, he'd be eating Jack in the Box doing his radio broadcast from his boyhood room in Pismo Beach. But since he's been forced a number of times to do endeavors, usually they end up well and very successful for him. Could this be yet another chapter in that novel? Speaking of novels, why we love Star Wars, available now. If you look at Shannon Barney, Christian, we know what she's capable of from a managerial standpoint. She inspires her players. She uses all the forces of darkness that she can con to get them that extra competitive spirit. So if you're looking for an edge in management, you got to say it goes to Shannon Barney, not because Ken Knapsack may not be great, but just because we've seen it time and time again, as recently as past tournaments in this very season of the new era. You're absolutely right. She, she's already, she took Mike Kalinowski to the finals. Chance won the tournament. She's got uh, Laura Kelly in, in, in the semifinals. She's, and corruption knocking on the door. So without any further ado, let us bring in the manager of the Burning Droogs, the pit boss, Ken Napsock, and the manager of corruption, former stablemates, if you will, Shannon Barney. Shannon, the queen of corruption, that look, I've seen that before, and that is a look of disdain. And is that, when you look at Ken, does that bring up past memories? Is that what that look is? Um, it's not so much to Ken, you know, Ken and I are, we're all right. We're on okay terms. We understand each other. It's the choke show that I have a problem with today. Oh, you're, so it's, it's, it, this is more about you and Bonnie than it is, uh, and Ken, that's interesting. Ken, Ken just got left with these scraps. Um, this was Robert Meyer Burnett's problem and Ken took, he took that burden for him. So I, I feel bad for Ken. This is a, this is a really crappy, crappy situation for you to be in. Um, I'm not sorry you're in it because you chose to come back, but you know, uh, that's where we're at. I just, Ken, I wanna make sure that um, when you spoke to Bonnie, if you were ever able to get in touch with her, you did let her know that this is not an Instagram story. This is a Schmodown singles tournament play in, right? We're all clear on that, she's aware. Your honor, can I approach the bench? You can, Ken. Okay. Uh, first of all, I want to address a lot of things here. Uh, first of all, I, I really enjoy Shannon. If I, if we were at a local diner having a slice of pie and a salad, we'd be having a great conversation. I, I think what she's what Shannon is learning right now is it's easy to be a number two or a, back in the day a number three and look up at the leadership and, and complain. It's easy to complain about the, the ship captain. And then when you get the ship, you start learning. Uh, about what uh, it really takes to run. And I think she's had some ups and she's had some downs. So this isn't, I agree with Shannon. This isn't about her. I, I, I actually really do like Shannon Barney. She brings some, some attitude. She, uh, got, I love the tiara, uh, you know, uh, but Christian, I'm here for two reasons. I'm here for two reasons. One, to make sure my invoice is filled out right so you can get it. Two, I'm here to help Bonnie Somerville restore the faith in the fans because I've been in her position. I really love Bonnie Somerville because I owe her a hosting gig. That day she made up that excuse about that tree fall on her car. I got to host the panel for the first time in my life. I've only been hired two other times since to host the panel, but that was the first time. And so I owe it to her to come in here and take this thing where she, people overlook her. They overlook her because of the Instagram. Is it Bonnie's fault that she looks damn good in a Palm Springs pool? Is that her fault? No. Flaunt it. 
flaunt it. If I could do that, I'd wear the same swimsuit. It'd probably be the same result. But I'll tell you what, I'm here because Bonnie, I believe in her because she has believed in me and we are the ones who are overlooked and we're going to bring it here today. Okay. Uh, Ken, I got to ask you about this match though, because sure, you can root for Bonnie in terms of you're the uncle at the Little League game and you're sitting on the bleachers and you're sipping a beer out of a brown paper bag, but that's not your role today. You're actually managing this player. So do you have any hesitation about managing Bonnie Somerville through three rounds of combat? And Shannon, I'll ask the same question to you as somebody who's a newcomer to competition at this level. Do you have any reservations about being the manager for a rookie? Well, I, I don't have any reservations about managing. I've been a baseball coach. I've been a, a director, been a public safety director. I, I've been in a lot of positions of leadership, and, and I love working with the folks and, and getting them to places where they don't think they can be. And Bonnie, though, that that's not even a problem, actually. No, think about it. Bonnie is here to prove something. Bonnie's here because she knows who she is. This, this is this is a, a, a staple around these parts. And for people to overlook her, look, as long as she shows up, and she's here, right? She's, she's here. here. She's okay. here. As long as she's here, she's good to go. And, and you know, Marisol, God bless her, showing up here. But this is what they do to you, Marisol. This is what corruption was about. They praise this heap on you. You're the next this, you're the next that. And then you falter once, and they rip you out, and they throw you into the trash. Be careful of that. Be careful Be careful of that. That's what corruption was about back in the day. Well, Shannon, he's got a point. I mean, Bonnie did win. A, I mean, she played the match. You didn't wait at all. You traded her the next day. Uh, and any regrets about how you handled that situation? Absolutely not. I practice what I preach. I tell every single one of my players to trust their guts, and I trusted mine, and it has served me well so far getting rid of her. I have no qualms about that. As far as um, my reservations about managing Marisol go, I have zero reservations about managing Marisol. In fact, I am pleased and very excited to manage Marisol because... Bonnie is a veteran who plays like a rookie, whereas Marisol is a rookie who plays like a veteran. And I trust her, and I am so ready for her to come out here and show you guys what she's got today. All right. Well, it is ready. The stage is set. Shannon Barney, Ken Knapsack, former allies, and now on the other side of the table. Thank you, guys. Good luck to you both. All right, putting Shannon out, and I'll, I'll be honest with you. I, I think I'm going to probably have to bring Shannon back on camera when Bonnie uh, comes out because uh, I, I got to hear what they have to say to one another. You right. love your drama. Uh, hey, th there, there's a lot of it here today, so we might as well be entertained also. All right, so, Mark, are you ready to go? Flossing and flying. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia showdown. Introducing first. Representing the Burning Droogs with a record of zero wins, three defeats, she is Bonnie the Smoke Show Somerville. Look at Somerville coming in hot over here, ladies and gentlemen. Move it. Look at these moves. This is a different Bonnie Somerville. Sorry, what? The Smoke Sorry, what, Show. Shannon? Sorry, what, Shannon? You have something to say? You should say it. I'm ready. Let's go. Bonnie, Bonnie, before we bring Shannon in, my goodness, my goodness. Uh, that is the Palm Springs picture times 100. Um, look. Well, I have you, to live I, up to my name, Smoke Show. So. Well, I've known you for a while now, and I know that after th that match, you came into play, Brett Sheridan. You were very excited. You were excited to play on a faction. You and Shannon seemed to hit it off. You told me how much she was on your side, and then... Yeah. Yeah, you didn't get it. You you didn't even hear yeah. too much except you were traded. And was there a right. phone call? How did that all go down? Oh, no, no, no. Typical of like a Hollywood wannabe that wants to be as successful as me. Um, they basically just drop you and they don't even give you an email or a call or something. It's just jealousy. You know what I mean? So like I'm here to win and and I love the pit boss. Ken, I love you so much. Thank you for believing in me. But I'm really here, you know. To kick you. Ass. Uh -huh. All right. Well, Shannon, uh, I, I, Mark, I got to do it. I got to. I mean, you have a question real quick before I bring Shannon in because I, I, I have I got to have these two haven't talked since that day. Well, anything I ask now is just going to get subterfuge by that intro. So, yeah, just go ahead. Let's let's see the drama. Shannon, oh. 
You, you, oh, hi. hi, hi. I'm so hi. sorry, I got a little confused here. Is this a trivia show or is this a cleavage competition? It doesn't matter, because I'll beat you in both, honey. So you sit have, down. Listen, I'm not gonna lie, you have great cleavage, but I do think I beat you in this one, sorry. Oh, Bonnie, 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 just as delusional as always. Listen. Nice tiara, though. Nice you, tiara. Thank you, thank you, it was very expensive. What are you, what are you Sleeping Beauty? No, I'm the f queen. Oh, oh. Yeah, but that's all right. All right. Well, listen. I thought you were a friend. I thought you were a friend. That's cool. We're good. We're good. Bonnie, here's here's the problem with you, and here's why you're gonna lose today. Oh, please tell because me what the problem is with me. I can't. If you would wait. shut your mouth, I would be happy to. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. You're going to lose today because you have exhausted all of your energy trying to hurt my feelings, and you've forgotten that I don't have any, so that doesn't work. And you're gonna need all of the energy in the world to beat Marisol, because you're not fighting me for the points, you're fighting her. No, I'm actually fighting to beat you. And I love Ken and I've known him, what, as long as I've known Christian. So I want to do this for Ken because he believed in me and he took me on and he is my inspiration and I do not want to let him down. Cool, cool, you owe me a bottle of champagne. <laughs> really? All right, well, Mark, <laughs> anything else but? No, nah, we can just keep going. All right, Bonnie, we're going to put you in the waiting room and get to your opponent. Uh, hold on one second. We're getting the light. Yeah. <laughs> and her opponent making her Schmodown debut, representing corruption. She is Lady Justice Marisol McKee. Marisol McKee is here. The corruption theme blazing as Lady Justice makes the debut. Marisol, you see a lot of a uh, lot of conversation here between your manager and former player and Bonnie. Um, a lot of drama. How are you? How are you feeling going into this match against uh, a match with so much history in it? Look. I am here for one reason and one reason only. I am Shannon's enforcer, okay? People forget um, about our origins and corruption is about exposing the rotten trash in this league. And as Shannon's enforcer, Bonnie is the next person on our list. So I'm, I'm here for one reason, all right? I already said it. And that reason is to retire her. To retire Bonnie Somerville. Wow. Okay. Uh, Mark? Uh, Marisol, how do you plan on retiring Bonnie Somerville? Just from a strategic standpoint, what was the preparation like in this first matchup for you in this league? Um, the prep was <laughs> minimal considering my competition. Um, but, you know, we have we have some tape on Bonnie. So, so we just picked uh, her weaknesses, which look to be about everything um and that leaves it pretty wide open so i think that speaks for itself all right um i had so many questions but i, I really want to see this match so uh, i i have to tell you marisol i'm gonna just drop you out for a, a moment here bring back bonnie and now there is marisol okay and here we go so mark our competitors are here the rules of round number one, my friend. Oh, thank God. We still have rules. In round number one, eight questions are going to be asked to the field in eight different corners of movie trivia, schmodown know-how. Each question is worth one point. There is no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round number one anyway. As soon as we ask the question, competitors have 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at an answer with whatever writing utensil you have on whatever tablet you provided for yourself. Once we ask you by name to reveal your answer, please show what you wrote to the camera at the same time you verbalize your attempt into the microphone. I remind each competitor of your three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the match. If you're not sure you heard a question right, you want to buy yourself another 15 seconds, use a Josh the Engineer rule. You also each have one challenge to be issued by your manager at any point throughout the match. You may initiate the challenge, but your manager must confirm and ratify. Christian, it looks from the backgrounds of our competitors that I will not be asking any questions about the streets immediately bordering Lake Michigan. Good call. All right. So we, where is that? We start with Marisol. Are you ready? Let's do this. Bonnie, are you ready? Oh, I'm ready. 
Then let's get ready to Schmodown. Round number one, question number one. Here we go, ladies. Action adventure. That's the first category. To date, how many Indiana Jones films have been released? Wait, in total? Yeah, Christian. Yeah, in total. There's, in total. In total? There's movie stars. Yes. Including, including the original? Yeah, yeah, all, yeah, all released. Okay. Five, four, three. Did you tell her to do that? One. Pens down, please. Pens down. And we start with Marisol. Four. Yes, Bonnie. Five. That's incorrect. Marisol goes up by one. Is total four. Four. All right. So let's get to the. Yeah. Next okay. Question. I'm gonna bring it back. I'm gonna bring it back. Here we go. Next question right. mark. If it helps Bonnie at all, there was gonna be five by this time, but then it got pushed back. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. That's that's what I was thinking because unlike most people, I actually get auditions, so I probably was gonna get audition for that. So. All right. There we go. Uh, duly noted. No points will be awarded. Your next question. <laughs> He's in the world of Oscars, okay. the Academy Awards. And your question, who won Best Actress for her role as Viola de Lesseps in 1998's Shakespeare in Love? I'll give you that name pronunciation, Viola de Lesseps. I think you said it wrong both times. Viola de Lesseps. Viola de Lesseps. Three times. And five. De Lesseps. Four. Three. Two. One, pens down, pens down, please. And Bonnie? Yes, Gwyneth Paltrow is correct. Make sure you say it, Bonnie, also. And Marisol? Gwyneth Paltrow. Yes, all who right. Is, who is Gwyneth Paltrow? Perfect, all right, so it's two to one, two to one. Marisol McKee keeps her lead. Here's question number three. Dramas. What 2015 biopic tells the story of the rise of the rap group NWA? I uh, had some friends took their took their six month old baby into the theater to see this movie. Oh my! Wow, God. I hate them. Five, four, baby was asleep the whole time. Two, one. Pen down, please. Pen down, Marisol. And Marisol, what do you have? Straight out of Compton. That is correct. And Bonnie. Straight out of Compton. Yes. Okay. Three, two, three, two. So next question. Three, two. McKee with a one point lead over Somerville. Here we go. Next one. That's right. We move on to category number four, and this is the world of the 2000s, that decade. Your question. Who plays the lead role of Nicholas Angel in Edgar Wright's 2007 film, Hot Fuzz, which was Christian's nickname in high school? Uh, Hot junior Fuzz high. Harlow. Junior high. And five. Do I get to? Four. Three. Get... Wait. Two. One, pens down, please. Pens down, Bonnie. And we start with Bonnie. Didn't have it? I have it, I think. Did you write it? Let me see it. I wrote it. Simon Pegg. That's correct. Wow. And, and, and Marisol? Simon Pegg. That's correct. So four, three, four, three. I see Ken is, Ken's flexing. Ken got excited over there. Um, four, three. Good. Hip boss, I love you. So, yeah. All right, here we go. Next question. This is question number five. In what franchise will you find the characters such as Will Turner? Category question. It's fantasy sci-fi. In what franchise will you find characters such as Will Turner, Jack the Monkey, Elizabeth Swan, and Captain Barbosa? Did you say the franchise? Did you say the? I did. It's okay, Mark. Did you? Right. I'm, I'm juggling a lot of. Uh, I, I'm not mad. Here. I'm not mad. At and five, four. Three, two, one. Pens down, please. And Marisol. Pirates of the Caribbean. That is correct. Bonnie. Didn't, didn't have it. it. Didn't have it. All right. So Marisol goes up by two. Five, three over Bonnie Somerville. Uh, next question, Mark. That's right. At this point, we will note that Marisol is still perfect. If she manages to get three more questions correct That's in perfect. a row, that would be a perfect round number one in which Marisol will be asked a bonus question just to her. We also appreciate the penmanship. Well done. Maybe the best I've ever seen. In the category of comedies yeah. is your next question. And the query is, in what 2012 comedy film will you hear the line, you're one of the acapella girls, I'm one of those acapella boys, and we're going to have acapella children? 
a good line. It is. It's a good line if uh, you're in that line of work. Good pickup line. Supermarket. Work. No. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Pens down, please. And Bonnie. Pitch perfect. It is. And Miracle. Pitch perfect. All right. So 6-4. McKee keeping a two-point lead over Bonnie. And here's our next question. This is from Horror Slash Thriller. God, I hate this category. Who directed 1999's Sleepy Hollow? What category is that, Christian? You didn't say it. I hate you. (laughs) I'm in his head, folks. We're on the same team here, buddy. And five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. Pens down. And Marisol. Tim Burton. Yes, Bonnie. Tim Burton. You got it. All right. So seven, <laughs> seven, five, seven, five. And I've been we practicing, go. guys. Well, final question. Final question here. And Marisol McKinney, should she hit this, will get a bonus question uh, that only she will answer. And here is our final question here, Mark. That's right. And your final question is in the world of animated movies. Oh. And your question in 1994's The Lion King. What is the name of the rock formation that is home to the king of the land? You know, I really like that remake, Christian. The one thing, um, the scene with the, um, uh, the, the scene with the turd rolling, I didn't need that. Five, four, you know? three, two, I know. one, pens down. Pens down, minute. please. And we start with Bonnie. Bonnie? Pride glory. Pride rock. We was looking for and Marisol. It is Pride Rock. Pride Rock is for and Marisol gets a perfect round, perfect round there for Marisol McKee. So Once Marisol, again, I lose by one word. This is you didn't lose yet, and this is this is for you, Marisol, and only you here. You don't have to write it down. You just have to answer it. Here is your question: Are you ready? Yep. Which 2017? musical has the following songs on its soundtrack never enough and the other side (laughs) five four three gonna go with mary poppins returns Looking for the greatest showman. Looking for the greatest showman. All right, so Marisol missed that, but she's still got eight questions there, but it is an eight to five lead. All right, bringing in both Shannon and Ken Nabs back here. Don't laugh. Uh, all right. <laughs> so let's... Ben, come on, give me some support. Before we get any support at all, and we're going to get, we're gonna get to Mark, we're in round two. Can you please read the rules? Okay, yeah, feel like an overwhelmed dad on vacation taking the kids to Disneyland where I will turn this car around unless we get through the rules of round number two which is known as the wheel round the wheel of fate doom and ultimately justice each competitor gets a spin at that our wheel because this is a singles match each genre contains four questions of movie trivia schmodown know-how once you settle on that category each question is worth two points there's no penalty for missing a question however stealing is available in round number two so if you're not sure of the answer, you can ask us for multiple choice. We give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question goes down to one point. Uh, Christian, does appear that all competitors still have their use of a challenge and their three JTE rules. So Marisol McKee is going to get the decision if she wants to spin first or defer to her opponent. All right, we're going to remove Bonnie and Ken here for a second. Shannon, you have 60 seconds to talk to Lady Justice starring now. LJ, that was beautiful, honey. Beautiful. (laughs) That performance was better than Bonnie's entire get up every single time. Just keep doing what you're doing. Shake off that bonus question. Doesn't matter at this point. Let's spin first. Let's increase this lead. And uh, let's see if we can get her in a knockout or TKO range. Stay calm, stay collected. Doesn't matter what you spin here. We know what we're keeping. We know what we're throwing away. We know what we want here. So let's do, let's do it. Let's All go. right. Let's keep it going. Here's the wheel. Marisol will be spinning first. And here it is. Let's go. 
Wheel is fun, as Ken says. The spin is in, and we get to 2,000. Woo! Yep. 2,000. 2000. Uh, what do you think, Marisol? You want to you wanna spin again, or you want to maybe try your luck with 2,000s? Um, I feel comfortable with the 2,000s. Yeah. I think, I think I you think should keep it. We got way too close to a point. It's choice. So let's, yeah. stay, let's stay 2,000s. Let's see what yeah. we get here. All yes. right. You got this. Hey, you got all your rules. You can go to multiple choice. Doesn't matter. You're in a good position to be able to utilize it if you need it. So take a breath. Listen to all your questions. You got this. Let's rock and roll, baby. All right. All right. Thank you, Shannon. We're going to drop you out here. Now we're going to bring Bonnie back. Nice. Oh, actually, oh, sorry, Bonnie. Bring you back in a second. Hold on. Uh, sorry, Bonnie. You had a question? Sorry. Am I allowed to steal? You I can apologize. steal in this round. Yes, you can steal in this round. Okay. And I forgot. Sorry. Thank but you. You may not steal until... If Marisol's asked the question, she gets the first opportunity to answer. She misses, then we'll re-ask you the question. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, so here we go. Four questions in the realm of 2000s. Marisol, are you ready? Yes. Here we go. Who plays the character of Ivy Walker, a blind woman living in a village named Covington in 2004's The Village? Bryce Dallas Howard. Yes, for two points. That is correct. All right. Who starred in the 2007 action revenge film Death Sentence? Kevin Bacon. Correct for two points. Damn, she's good. All right. Here is question three. What is the nickname of Jimmy Rabbit's battle rap rival played by Anthony Mackey in 8 Mile? Multiple choice. Is it A, Wink, B, Lil Tick, C, Lickety Split, or D, Papa Doc? And Can I get those one time free repeat? One multiple choice, yes, it won't cost you anything. A, Wink, B, Lil Tick, C, Lickety Split, D, Papa Doc. And five, four, three, two, one. B? No, she, she had an answer. B, she said B. Okay, B is incorrect. Bonnie, for a one-point yeah. deal, here is the here is the question. What I is know the, what it is. Let me listen first. What is the nickname of Jimmy Rabbit's battle rap rival played by Anthony Mack in Eight Mile? Is it A. Wink, B. Little Tick, C. Licky Split, or D. Papa Doc? D, Papa Doc. That is correct. For one point, Bonnie picking up a steal there. Big steal for Bonnie. All right, Marisol, here's your final question. Question number four. Here you go. All right. In the Santa Claus 2, what does Santa have to do in order to stop the desantification process? Let's take multiple choice for this. Is it A, get married, B, give everyone coal, C, become a toy, or D, tell someone that he's Santa? A. A is correct. One point ah! for Marisol. And so Marisol sees herself pick up some points there. 13-6 as she can completes round number one. All right, Marisol, going to drop you out here, and we're going to bring in Ken Napsok. Ken, you got 60 seconds to talk to Bonnie starting now. Yeah. Well, first of all, I was almost going to challenge because the adventures of young Indiana Jones, Treasure of the Peacock Sky, was a TV movie. Movie. Where were you in that, PJ? Listen here, Bonnie. Frank Reich, when he stood in the locker room in 1992, down to the Houston Oilers, 35-3, to just said, I ain't, I ain't got no fears. We're going to go out here and win. Bonnie, you and I are here today for the most true, pure American reason, to get paid. You can't lose, Bonnie. You got this. I got this. All I got right. This. All right, so here is the the wheel going to come up, and here's the spin for Bonnie. According to my research, Ken, it was 28 to 3 at halftime, then Reich threw a pick six, make it 35 to 3 in the third quarter. Why don't you go root for the Washington football players? All right, so Tim Burton. Bonnie, uh, 60 seconds to discuss if you want to keep this with Ken starting now. 
Ken, do, what do I do if I don't want to keep this? What happens? Oh, spin again. If you have any inkling of knowledge, take it because you'll never know what you get on the respin. But look, we got Hanks, we got Meg Ryan, we're romance, we got Meryl Streep, Meryl Streep. The Egypt's watch and love that chant. So I'd say spin again. All right, I'm going to spin again. Thank you. All I'm right. Gonna to the pit boss. All right, well, here is the second spin. Whatever you got here, you got to take. Okay, I'll take it. And here is the spin. Ooh, ah. Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep. All right, Meryl so. Streep. All right, so Meryl Streep it is going to move Ken out of there, going to move Marisol in. Four questions in the realm of Meryl Streep. Um, here we go, Mark. Four questions to Bonnie. That's right. No crowd to laugh at comedies, no crowd to chant Meryl Streep, but she's watching, I'm sure. Hi, Meryl. Best to you and your family. Oh, my God. Uh, Bonnie, Meryl. four I'm questions. Meryl. Uh, your first question, Bonnie, as with every question, initially is going to be worth two points. We'll see how you want to handle those. In yeah. question number one, who directed Meryl Streep in the 1983 film Silkwood? Oh. I know this. How much do I get? Am I allowed to ask for time? Five. You can ask for a repeat. Four. Three. Can I get a repeat, please? First one. You may. Repeat, please. In the world of Meryl Streep, who directed Meryl Streep in the 1983 film Silkwood? Okay. Okay. And five, four. Just answer it, Bonnie. Three. Oh, Mike Nichols. <laughs> yes, you don't have to write it down. Ah! Correct. Uh, I got right. it. Yes, you got it. So you don't you don't have to write you don't have to write it down. You just, I'm sorry. You, I'm sorry. Like, I'm excited. I'm happy to be here. Okay, you got it right. Two points. So you just have to you just have to answer or uh, yeah. Sorry. No this sorry. Right, here sorry. we go. Here's the here's question number two. Mark, are you ready? Uh, certainly, Christian. Uh, question number two in the world of Meryl Streep. What Best Picture winner did Meryl receive her first Oscar nomination for? Kramer versus Kramer. That is incorrect. Oh! For a two-point steal, Marisol, I'll repeat the question for you. What Best Picture winner did Meryl receive her first oh, Oscar nomination for? Can I go back? No. The Deer Hunter. Yes. It is the Deer Hunter. That's a big steal, Christian. Two points for for uh, Marisol there, getting those two points. 15-8 as we get to our next question there, uh, Mark. That's right. Back to Bonnie for the world of Meryl Streep. And the question, your penultimate one in this round, what 2002 film from director Spike Jones stars Nicolas Cage and Meryl Streep as real-life writers Charlie Kaufman and Susan Orlean? Uh, I um, I know it. I'm sorry. I'm, um, do I get uh, more time? Uh, can I get another time? I know it. I just need more time. Second one. Okay. Uh, your question, we have one JD rule left. What 2002 film from director Spike Jones stars Nicolas Cage and Meryl Streep as real life writers Charlie Kaufman and Susan Orlean? Adaptation. Two points for Bonnie Somerville. Two points for Bonnie Somerville. All right, so here is the last one. That's right, that's a big answer, Christian, what because that, that guarantees that we're going to round three. Wow. Yeah. What's that? What's wrong? What are you asking? What, what does that mean? What does that mean? What does what mean? I'm excited. I... <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not out of the game, right? No, it's only the second round. You got it's it's 15, 10. You have one more question in round number two. All right, All right here we go. All right. Hand, hands up, guys. Both hands up, please. All right, here we go. We are now guaranteed a round number three in some fashion, and Bonnie can make it a three-point match. She gets this last question correct off the bat. Bonnie, in the world of Meryl Streep, your final question for two points. Right. Meryl Streep starred as Lindy Chamberlain in what 1988 film? Do I get any more time? One more if you want to use it. Uh, is that my last one? Yep. And five, four, three, two. I think it's... um. Uh, that's enough. Sorry. You're out of, no, no, wait. Out of time. Out wait, of time. Is that... Out um, of time. Um, yeah, it's done, time. Bonnie. Out it's time. over. We're going to give Marisol the chance to steal. Marisol, I'm going to repeat the question for you. Meryl Streep starred as Lindy Chamberlain in what 1988 film? A Cry in the Dark. 
That's a big steal. And Christian, we're back to a seven point lead from Aerosol as we enter round number three. What a steal by Lady Justice there. That was big. That was big. Bonnie fought really well. All right, so we're going to bring in both Shannon and Candace. Yes. Rules of round number three. Here we go. Mark, hit it. Round number three. This is the round that will determine the match. Let's we go to sudden death overtime in round okay. number three each competitor is going to choose their three categories though they may do it blind a la lady justice what we need from each competitor is three numbers these numbers can range from one to 20. each number corresponds to a different corner of movie trivia schmodown know-how your first question is worth two points your next one is worth three points your last one should we make it that far is okay. worth five of the biggest points of your life because they could get you into the tournament christian we're going to get the numbers from marisol first because like i said she enjoys a seven point lead so she is the right for her lucky numbers first marisol from one to 20 what feels lucky hmm. Keep it simple uh, yeah. and sequential. Um, let's do seven, eight, and nine. Seven, eight, and nine for Marisol and for Bonnie. Um, four, eight, and twenty-two. Uh, Not rocket science, honey. Let's do this. up up to twenty. Four, eleven, and one more. Good guy. I just handed that to you, Shen. Um, 4, 11, and 12. 4, 11, and 12. All right. So, 4, 11, and 12 for <sighs> Bonnie. Give me a moment here. For what it's worth, Bonnie, my favorite number is 22. Thank you. I always play 22 on crab. Oh, thank you. All right. Thanks. Thanks for a little support. So, we are now going to start with Bonnie Somerville. Mm -hmm. who is trying to avoid the TKO. No, so I'm, not getting, I'm not getting TKO'd. Well, we're going to start with Shannon here. Shannon, you got 60 seconds to talk to uh, Marisol starting uh, now. Marisol, I told you all I expected from you was to come in and play like a vet and you're doing it and you're you're incredible. Um, again, take your time. You've got all your JTEs. I would, normally wouldn't encourage a rookie to play with their food like this, but in this case, have at her. Let's take her out. Let's go. You got this. You got this. You got it, Queen. And you got. You have uh, sixty seconds to speak with Bonnie. Okay. So, yeah. Bonnie, as Frank White Reich stood in the locker room in 1992 and told his friends on the USA hockey team, Tiger Woods is up by four strokes, but we got home runs in our belts to win this. Calm down. Center yourself. Also remember that like JTE's takes on solo, you are empty when it comes to JTE challenges, okay? So just just concentrate and pull through. She's got one. She has one JTE left. She didn't use it at the end there. She's got one left. Oh, thank you. I'm correct. You have one left. All right, so <laughs> thanks. Good Ken. luck. All right. That, so, was, that was the most factually accurate thing Ken Absolute ever said. That's like that the most really fake person of all time. Go ahead. All right, so we're going to drop out. Ken here. We're going to drop out Shannon. And we now start with Bonnie Summer. Bonnie, you chose category number four. That would be in the realm of crime films. Crime films. Okay. All right. So we start with your two pointer. Who plays C's hardworking and by the book's father, Lorenzo, in A Bronx Tale? Robert De Niro. For two points for Bonnie Somerville. <laughs> All right. So question number two, Bonnie, is in the realm. This is number 11. Number 11. And that is Spielberg movies. Spielberg movies, Bonnie, for category number 11. All right. Here you go. Three-pointer. Three-pointer. Here you go. All right. What national landmark is the setting of the climactic scene in Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Oh, God. Uh, uh, um. Wait, do I get, uh, do I have I one more? One more? Four. What? Yes, you have one more. Are you using it? Five. Three, two. Are you using the repeat? <sighs> All right, well, you ran out of time. No, so, yes, yes, I'm using the repeat. 
I don't know what you're doing. Out of time. Out of time. Sorry. Right. The answer was Devil's Tower. All right. So now, now, Bonnie, you are, it is 12, 17. In order to tie the game, you need to hit this five pointer. If you miss it, Marisol McKee will win via TKO and pick up three points for corruption. Here is the final category. Bonnie, you chose category number 12. Category number 12. That would be Disney films. Okay. Disney films. Here we go. Five pointer bond. All right. What is the name of the king who is Prince Philip's father in Sleeping Beauty? Oh, oh, um, oh, uh, repeat the question, uh, repeat the question, re re repeat, I know it, I know it, I know it, repeat the question, please, please, please. What is the name of the king who is Prince Philip's father in Sleeping Beauty? Um, it is, God, I know it, I know it, I know it. The wait, whole guy just showed up. Hang on. Um, it is. Um, it is. Um, uh, uh, okay. Uh, Stephen uh, Hubert. Stephen Two. Hubert. That is correct. Ah! Oh my god. Google oh is correct. Oh Google is correct. Right. So you tie Stephen. I Hubert, got Hubert. Great. All right. So it is. You tied the game, but now we jump. Now we jump back to Marisol. Marisol, you can win the game with your two pointer mark. Uh, yes, she can, Christian. And in order to do that, she selected category number seven. Is that correct, Marisol? Yes. Uh, yes. All right. Uh, category number seven for two points and the win corresponds to the genre of new releases. These are films released in the last uh, 12 to 18 months, but given the current state of the world, Don't win. who knows? Your question for the win and to advance into the movie trivia schmodown singles league tournament. What is the subtitle to the third John Wick film? Parabellum. And your winner, ladies and gentlemen, ladies. Justice, Marisol McKee. Marisol, you had something to say to, to Bonnie? Uh, Bonnie, yes. One thing to say to you. Justice has been served. Marisol McKee hey, making her stamp. Bonnie, we're going to put you in the waiting room for the moment until we bring you back for the interview. Shannon, two points for corruption and Marisol officially in the next round to play against Paul Oyama. Uh, Mar uh, first, let me start with you, Shannon. We got I mean, look, you, you have to say, Bonnie didn't go out without a fight in this one. I will give Bonnie the first and last compliment she'll ever get from me. She scored more points than she did, I think, in any of her matches. So, nice work, Bonnie. You, you very narrowly escaped a TKO there, so. I will give you your your dues for that. I will she, give you your dues for that. That is a that is more points than I think I you even thought you could score. So she, like, would, she would have beaten Brett today. <laughs> a little too late for that, huh? But doesn't matter. We got our points back now, didn't we? <laughs> That's true, uh, Marit. So I have to tell you, this is this is uh, for a rookie to come in here. You played cool, calm, and collected the whole time, even if you missed a question, if something happened, you, and even with that last question, I feel you knew that two-pointer the second it was asked, and you were sitting there kind of sweating it out, making Bonnie sweat and everybody else sweat. Uh, you seem like you got this game, uh, you, you know this game pretty well. Is, would you say that's accurate? I think I've been doing my homework, um, and uh, I have great leadership. I have my queen mother to thank for everything, and <laughs> And I think that speaks for itself. I think that's that's where this is coming from. Yeah, Marisol, I, I want to go all the way back to when you discovered the movie Trivia Schmodown and go from there to now. What was the one point? Is there one moment that you can point to and you said, you know what, I can actually compete in this. I'm a fan, but I can actually do this. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I've been a, I've been a fan for a long time and I would always play along. 
Um, I would always play along with the matches because it always interested me. Um, I can't pinpoint a moment where I said, yeah, but, but, you know, it was enough perfect rounds, you know, playing along along the way that I was like, I think, I think I could probably take a stab at this. So. Well, you certainly did. And you, and you find yourself the victor here today. Like I said, two points for corruption, corruption, moving up the ladder once again. And Shannon, now the road does get a little bit more difficult as Marisol will find herself. She's one to know, but she is going up against a former champion in Paul Oyama. What's the prep like as you go playing swag here, who is also, it's been like a, a three, three faction race. So you got swag again and Oyama. What's the prep going to be like going up against a former champ? I mean, it's going to be the same prep that we always do. We've all got each other's backs. We're going to hit the sessions. Um, we have players on our faction who are very uh, intimately knowledgeable about Oyama. So um, I feel good about that. I feel good about Marisol's chances. A fan leaguer versus a fan leaguer. Once again, I get to dance with Winston. Um, this could be a nice little upset. Um, I'm very much looking forward to this. I, I don't uh, I don't discount Oyama, but he can be hot and cold. Which Oyama are we going to get? Are we going to get him trying to win a, defend his belt or win his belt or whatever he did when he got like three points against Bateman? Or are we going to get Oyama who's just unstoppable? Um, I'm banking on the former. We'll see what happens. But Marisol will be ready. And by the way, for all of you guys watching, if you're ever wondering what happens to a smoke show when she runs face first into a brick house, that's what you got today. Fair enough. Uh, Marisol, any words that you want to uh, share here going up against Paul Oyama? Because again, I think this is kind of a, a, two, a twofold for you because you had played in the fan leagues and he had a, a hell of a reputation there. And then, you know, he's a former champion in this league. He's got a, he, he shot to superstardom last year in this league. Um, is there intimidation when you go up against a guy like Oyama or is it a, is it a big challenge to, to kind of make your name on your second match ever in the Schmodown by going up against uh, Paul? Oh yeah. It's, it's all about the opportunity here. Um, um, which is what, which is where my head was at um, going into this anyway. You know, I, I, I only have everything to prove. Um, so Bonnie was, Bonnie was my, my snack. She was my first little bite. She was my taste, but Oyama is going to be my real meal. So this is, like I said, just an opportunity to get full. Fair enough. Mark, you got anything else or are you good to go? I'm, I'm a little scared, but I'm thankful that I just have to announce these and not compete anymore. <laughs> it's the truth. Well, listen, Shannon, congratulations again. You've been having a hell of a second run here. You know, Chance uh, just doing what he did. Mike making it to the finals. Laura Kelly, Marisol McKee now making her uh, big appearance. And, and and it's not over. you got Mike again. You've got, uh, you've, you've got Chance um, and Marisol and... Um, and your fourth, which I can't remember. I apologize at the top of my head. Who's your fourth? Adam Collins? How dare you? Adam Collins, thank you. How Tell dare you, you boss? Man. I know. On you. I know. My head is fried. But Adam Collins, who obviously just played. So, uh, so all right. Guys, thank you very, very much. Appreciate it. Going to put you in the uh, in, in the room Good here. Good luck with your next interview. That one's going to be a doozy. I'm sure you'll be watching every second of it. All right. We'll see you in a second. All right. Bringing back the smoke show, Bonnie Somerville and... Ken Napsaw, Ken, you look a little defeated. I'm sorry I let you down. I'm sorry. I, I, it's okay, Bonnie. I feel I like- I really tried. I think I did really well. Like, I just, like, I'm sorry. I, I'm All so right. bummed. I like, this was my best one, you know? That was, that was the best episode of Friends I've ever seen. Um, <laughs> let me tell you something. I feel like Warren Moon in the fourth quarter. I'm really bummed because I practiced a lot. I watched a lot. I practiced and like, I thought I was gonna, I really thought I was gonna stay in it. And I, yeah. listen, mm -hmm. Um, I mean, thank you for believing me and believing in me. And um, I mean, I did better than ever. So uh, you, you, we build on this. That's what you do. You build on your defeats. And, and that's uh, that's all I'm here for. I'm here for that kind of. Uh, I'm just so okay. bummed. Oh, my God. It, it's all right. Can I, just, can I get another score if I just like do the smoke show thing? Uh, that's I don't I think it's blurred out right now for the kids. <laughs> um, look. I, love, I love you guys. I, I, I really I, I'm sorry, Ken. I let you down. You're awesome. But I this is, is I really thought I might have had it. I like at yeah. one second. I was like, mm -hmm. I might have it. This is as going well as my uh, the funeral I attended on a Zoom call. Um, <laughs> look, Bonnie, 
I believe in you, and we're not done. If you don't want to be done, we're not done. I don't want to be done. Oh my God, uh, Christian has been okay. Christian's been on my ass for so long, and I actually really practiced yeah. and studied, and like I would not have gotten these questions a couple of years ago. You know, Christian, I wouldn't. Let's look. I, I, I do. Um, um, look, I look, Bonnie. It's, we'll work. We'll work. And, and, and to Shannon and Marisol, I just want to say congratulations, Shannon. I I, I love what you do outside of here. You're on the front lines of some real stuff, and and you brought some energy here. To, uh, and, and and to Marisol, this is a great win. But be careful. This is like when you order yeah. a buffalo chicken salad at Coral Cafe. It tastes good now, but in the morning you regret yeah. it. Be careful I, the next round. Be careful. Uh, and, and I hope the podcast uh, folks out there are nice to you because they've you know don't mess up. It's the only thing. Don't get in your I, head. Can I just say one thing, um, no, Marisol? No, no. Marisol, class act. Like, really, she's a winner. Great. Great. Shannon, like talking about Bonnie being just a snack. Like, no offense. Like, yeah. like she will never know what it's like to be a snack like me or have a snack like me. So, you I know, mean, there you go. There's different there's different brands of cheese. It's for all. Uh, so look, here's the thing. Uh, wrap it up here, Christian. With you, I got two things. Uh, let me know what's going on with the tournament because I'm I'm still got a lot of faith. I got I had Whitney Alonzo yeah. Jader yeah. Yeah. Alonzo Jader. I mean, you're still, you're still in this thing. And and two, do we submit invoices at the end of the month or is it uh, after match? Submit right after this match, if you like. Okay, great. I'm ready. Good. All right, all right, uh, Bonnie. I will say this before we uh, let you go here. Too. You absolutely fought. I think the same thing that I would tell you though is you just got to learn the game just a little bit better. Had you had you used those those JTEs a little earlier, you might have been able to pull a few of those Meryl Streeps because uh, you knew that you had them. You know, and the repeats, the same thing. It was really about gameplay today, and that was my point with Marisol McKee. She and I think Shannon said just a nerd. Like, like, like I can't compete. the game. She sometimes, the game. sometimes people are nerds. You know what I mean? No, like, I don't know. But, or, or she, or she knows the game. I'm joking. I'm well, just talking smack. I love. She's awesome. She's a class act. You guys are amazing. I love Mark. You, all of you. Thank you for having me back. Thank you, Brian. I really, 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 really want to be back, and I want to win. I swear maybe I do. Teams, maybe teams next year, next season. So, thank you, thank you guys for for having me all these years, and I love you all. Pleasure. Bonnie Somerville, ladies and gentlemen, and Ken Knapsack. It was exactly what we thought it would be. It was crazy, but I, I, you got to give Bonnie credit. It was not, some people were saying, oh, this is going to be a KO. This is going to be a slaughter. It certainly wasn't. Bonnie fought hard, and I truly think, had she just played the game a little better, we would have seen Marisol answer some questions, uh, uh, some more questions in that third round. Yeah, Christian, in terms of Iron Man 3 villains, I would say everybody came in here expecting to see Bonnie Somerville more like Ben Kingsley when it's revealed that he was just faking the Mandarin. But what we got was something a lot closer to the actual Mandarin because Bonnie knew a lot. She spun a great round two category for her. And she just, like you said, didn't quite have the gameplay skills round to round that Marisol displayed. And by the way, what a display it was for a rookie. Now, Paulo Oyama, he came in with a lot of heat on him and did very well early in his career. Maybe Marisol can learn a little something from the guy she's about to go up against. So, again, it's just one of the many amazing matchups we have in this tournament. And now, Christian, it gives us great pride to tell the fans out there the bracket is officially set for the movie trivia Schmodown singles tourney. And there's so much going on. Don't forget, massive, massive card on the undercard. The number one contender spot between Ben the Boss Bateman, former champion, the end of the action civil war as he goes up against former friend, former partner, Andrew Guy, the Debonair One, Debonair One himself, and the main event. One of the biggest main events, Mark, that we think we've ever seen. Chris Jericho, Le Champion, versus the king of pop culture, director extraordinaire Kevin Smith. In a one-on-one -on -one battle, it's going to be pretty exciting, and that you can catch that on this channel. It was a pretty great uh, pop-up that they had in Hollywood. I don't know who was able to go, but it was just like basically every Kevin Smith movie in one little place. I don't know if you got a chance to check it out, but they had the actual thing from Clerks that was right there. You could go look at, hopefully while wearing a mask. So a lot of excitement here in Southern California, but more importantly, here in the virtual space of the movie trivia showdown. Make sure you check us out on Facebook and enjoy us wherever you digest your podcast. For Christian Harloff, I'm Mark Ellis reminding everybody that this tournament starts Monday and it's about to get hot. I'm going to sweat. I'm, I'm already sweating.